You're such an asshole. This is not assholeconsulting.com. This is this is just the old cap. This is original, inspired by uh, by questions I keep getting at assholeconsulting.com. And it is it is apparent to me that after I've received several emails from clients that we have to explain why you go into business because I'm getting a lot of emails, a lot of questions from my clients that are all like, "Hey man, I want to make lots of money. I want to go into business." And I'm just like, and and already, already it's not the hairs on the on the back of my neck are going up. It's I want to punch these kids and they're innocent. That's the problem. They're innocent. They they have fallen completely for this Hollywood dude bro what your business school and MBAs uh, uh, schools have, have taught you or trained you to think that uh, what entrepreneurship and, and what going into business is all about why you should go into business that it's you know it's coke and whores and not fast cars and all this other stuff so I'm going to explain to you why you should go into business this is also what another reason to do this is because in addition to the dude bro flashy bullshit that you see on rap videos as to why you go into business. Working in banking when I saw these entrepreneurs, why they went into business was a lot very similar to, uh, and I love these shows like Bar Rescue, Restaurant Impossible, where these fucking dopes, these fucking morons who are not smart enough to run a business. That, you know, it doesn't take a lot to run a business, I'm being honest. You don't have to be a genius, but you cannot be a fucking idiot. Where they start a business, because I thought it would be fun. So, before you people expend your time, your youth, or heaven help you if you were the fu one of the fucking idiots I had to work with as a banker, where you cash in your retirement savings, your 401k, or mortgage your house to pursue some poppycock bullshit fucking dream about buying a bar or running a horse farm. I like the horses. Whatever other fucking bullshit it is that you stupid middle age, midlife crisis, back then baby boomer fucks, but now Gen X fucks are just pissing away your futures and crippling yourself financially. Before you piss it away, let me explain to you why you go into business. And there are only three reasons, only three, you really go into business for yourself, okay? First one, money. And we're not talking, I, I, I love it, I get this, these quotes. You can just tell, again, they watch way too many rap videos, they're watching too much fucking NBA, and I'm terribly sorry to be honestly truthful, a disproportionate percentage of you are young black males who have swallowed the fucking Kool-Aid, and you're already operating at a disadvantage, and now you're going to cripple yourself even further, because you got to go out and have pimps and hoes. No. You go in for money. Yes, as much money as possible. That is the upside of potential. Like, for example, i got a question later on tonight I have to do about asshole consulting. He's like, I want to make a lot of money. And he says, so I was thinking about becoming a doctor and engineer. And it's like, okay, you will make a lot of money. You will maybe even become a millionaire with inflation because a million dollars isn't what it used to be. But you are not going to be hibbity hopping and sfiggity foos or whoever the hell is the latest dipshit on MTV. And they're not even running videos on MTV. Whatever show has it where the guy's got the cash and is doing this, that, that stuff, whoever that is. He didn't go to engineering school. He got lucky as fuck, got a contract, and for whatever amount of millions of dollars he's making, the people who made him what he is over the, the, the record companies and all that, they're making 10 times the amount that they're paying him. Look up MC Hammer. All right? So uh, it, you are not going to make fuck you money, this infinite amount of wealth type of money, LeBron James money, or Bill Gates money. Uh, becoming a doctor or an engineer. You have to become an entrepreneur. You have to start your own. So you are on the right track uh, if you're thinking about entrepreneurship and starting a business to make money. You are not on the right track if you're starting off as an engineer or a doctor. You make money, you're not going to starve. All right? But you're not going to make that buku amount of coin. However, the reason you go into business isn't even necessarily for buku amount of coins. It's not billions. It's not hundreds of millions. It's not to be that dipshit kid wearing fake jewelry, flashing money around with a fucking Fast and the Furious 12 bullshit race with chicks with booty shaking it on the, on the drag race. And that's not what you're going for. What you're going for is fuck you money. And what I mean by fuck you money is what's it's come from The Gambler. It's a horrible movie with John Good. John Goodman is the only one that actually saved it. But you're going for, and he explains it perfectly after watching this video, go and look up Fuck You Money John Goodman, and he explains it. He says, when you're $2 million up, that's your position of fuck you, all right? 
you buy yourself a house, what is he, buy yourself a house, nothing fancy, an indestructible Japanese shitbox like a Honda, and you throw the rest in the bank at, at two, two and a half, three percent, and you live off the interest. That's your position of fuck you. Your boss says, fuck you, does it? fuck you, all right? You are going for freedom. You want the money that is going to set you free from ever having to work for somebody again. That isn't Bill Gates' $47 billion. It's not having a hoogity head and the hoogity hoogity doos. It's not his $50 million. Uh, and and, it's, and it, it could be, it could be the $2.5 million that you get from being a doctor and engineer, but you're still working for somebody else as a doctor and engineer, all right? So your goal is to get fuck you money, which isn't necessarily rich, and that is dependent upon your personal spending and your personal philosophy about frugality and minimalism. If you are a minimalist, fuck you money could be $500,000. Most people could have fuck you money if they just realize that the most important thing in life is humans. You don't need a fucking car or bullshit rings or all this other crap that the corporate media is selling you, all right? All you have to do is find out what's most important, family, friends, and loved ones. You don't need fancy cars. You don't need a McMansion. You don't need the latest purse. You don't need the latest bag. I mean, I got my final, this looks, this is a get up. This. I was doing bachelor pad theater beforehand and I'm too lazy to change out of this. But anyway, you need that amount of fuck you money. If you could be a minimalist and lower what you need in life, you could probably get it under 500,000. And then being self-employed, that allows you to do what you want, more or less, at least under your command. To raise that 500,000, maybe a million, or if you're the average person, 2.5 million, and then you are free. You never have to answer to anybody again, all right? So that is, you are going for fuck you money, but understand what fuck you money is. It's not billions. It's not even multiple of millions, all right? For most people, it will be. But if you can lower your spending, you can be free for the rest of your life. You will never have to work for someone again. That's the second reason that you go into business, second real reason, and that is you have no boss. <clears throat> and having no boss has a plethora of fringe benefits. Number one, <clears throat> you are no longer a slave. You are not owned by this cocksucking motherfucking piece of shit. And most bosses are cocksucking motherfucking pieces of shit who are sadists on top of it. You don't have to deal with their bullshit, you don't have to deal with their drama, and, and I know everyone's, well, everyone's boss is a dick. No, everyone's boss is a dick. Have you noticed how every company goes belly up except for very few? Most bosses are incompetent fucks. That's why they're managers. They're not the fucking owners. Bosses are just regular working people who sucked enough cock to get promoted to assistant vice reserve manager, and they lord that shit over the guys that they were just working with on the line beforehand. These are not intelligent people. These are not superior people. They are conformists. They are obedient little lemmings and slaves. And on top of it, they're egomaniacs. So if you can get out from underneath these disgusting, evil, vile people, you don't have to... I mean, I mean really, it's, it's hilarious. They're always like, oh yeah, your boss was a dick. And they, they think there's something wrong with the employee. It's like, no, most bosses are dicks. And if you could get rid of the boss... And it's funny, they're like, man, you ain't got a boss. That's great. I said, wait a minute. I thought this happened exactly to me. I thought I was the one with the problem because I had an attitude and like, oh yeah, my boss has always had the problems. Now you're envious of me because I don't have a boss. But I thought it was my problem and bosses were just these wonderful, great things. Then why, did, why do people celebrate it when they get rid of their boss? When you make it, why do they, why do they celebrate it? And why are people like, wow, man, you ain't got a boss? Because bosses are fucking evil, dumber than fuck pieces of shit. As I told you before. So if you get rid of the boss, you get all that freedom. You get all the, the, the bad. But here's the number one reason why you don't want a boss. And as it pertains to entrepreneurship and going into business. Without a boss, you have no obstacles. You have no hurdles. You have no walls. You have the ability for the first time in your life to achieve excellence. A boss does not want you to achieve excellence. It took me forever to figure this out. But bosses do not want you outshining them because then the higher ups will see that you're better than your boss and then they will fire your boss and hire you. I thought, no, they wouldn't. They'd say, well, good, good hiring that guy. In some truly but rare meritocratic companies that happens. But for the most part, because remember, bosses are inferior piece of cocksucking, obedient, conformist scum. They will, and they're inferior, they will freak out and they will try to fire you, lecture you. I mean, people in the comment section below will tell you anecdotes and stories. And the reason why is most people, most bosses, are petty and insecure. 
You cannot achieve your best. You cannot achieve your excellent, what you are absolutely 100% capable of, having some dipshit in charge of you. You need to have no one in charge of you so you're in complete command and control of your resources, your time, your decision making, and that means you have to be the boss. Right? You have clients, certainly they're quote, your boss, but there's not a manager telling you the number one word that, that inhibits and stops all corporations and all companies from achieving maximum profit, and that is the word no. You need nobody in front of you to tell you no. And if once you get rid of your boss, then you are allowed to run free and have complete command and control of how you want to set up your business and your operations and manage your company. And that's how, that's how you really make money. Is all being a, an entrepreneur or a business owner is, is moving different assets and aligning them and organizing them into a machine that is more efficient than your competitor's machine so it makes more money, cheaper, cheaper goods and services, and then people go with it. All right? And there's always room at the top. There's always room. It, it, it's amazing how inefficient and incompetent most companies and corporations are. Uh, anyway, so it, it, once you get rid of fucking um, the pointy-haired boss and move him out of the way, uh, economies of scale, efficiencies, you're making decisions. How many of you have been in meetings, huh? You know who forces you to go to that? Bosses who are dipshit, conformist, cocksucking, motherfucking pieces of shit, as I said before, right? You don't have meetings. Meetings are stupid. So while corporations, your competitors, are dealing with bosses in meetings and slowing themselves down, shooting themselves not with a, with a bullet in the they shoot shooting themselves with a nail gun so they can't even move. They're nailed to the wall. While they're doing that, you're off running the 100-meter dash making more money, right? It, it is not just the benefits of not having a boss, but the real main benefit is that it is the, you're finally unshackled and you are allowed to run free and achieve your best. Right? That's why you don't need us. The third one. Mental health, all right? <clears throat> Closely related to not having a boss, but you're just gonna live a better life. Everyone there like, I always get a kick. Uh, how people just think like a job is like this, this necessary evil, like you have to go do it. And you do have to do something, that is true. But you have to commute one hour each way for two hours sitting in traffic, getting pissed off, having your life erode away, wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, and then <clears throat> to sit at an uh, office in a queue with your idiotic, cocksucking, motherfucking, stupid, inferior piece of shit boss, as I said before, piss poorly managing you, if managing you at all. It comes in and lectures you because you didn't read his or her fucking mind. And you do that for eight hours a day. That's not healthy. That is not healthy at all. And then it's always worried about getting laid off. Oh, you got your 2% raise. Oh, boy, you got your 2% raise. Oh, my God. And then, like, you'd like to take time off. You'd like to, you know, can you go to Europe for a month? I can. I can. I know I can. And actually, in part, it has to do with self-employed, but it also has to do with minimalism. But I know most people like to spend their money on bags and rings and shit. Uh, but the, the mental health that derives from the benefits of self-employment and going into business for yourself are amazing. You you will run your company more efficiently than the than average boss, so that saves you more time, so you're working less. A perfect example is not, who, who's, who's it, who is the idiots that would actually build a building and set up a factory, or a factory if you're making a physical product? But if you are the boss, you, are, you would be stupid to have an office building. Why would you have an office building? The technology exists that you don't go to an office building. You have your laptop and you go to the coffee store and you sip and you, sip, you drink your coffee. Sometimes you go to the bar and you drink whiskey while you're doing the work from the convenience of a laptop. Right? You're already saving millions of dollars worth on unnecessary office rental expenses. You don't, you don't have a commute. You don't have, uh, what else? You, you could work from home. You could spend time with your kids. You're less likely to have divorce. Your kids are likely to grow up, you know, much better reared, more grounded. Less problems, less stress in your home life then. Your spouse is happier that you're there. You're making money, you're in a better mood, you're not beating your kids because you had a tough day at the office, right? There is so much, and then you're happier, and that's the ultimate goal is that you're happier because if you look at working for a job, you look at the alternative, they torture you mentally, they do. And I'm not saying this like some pansy-ass millennial that never had to work a real job. I mean, I'm saying this as a guy who's been self-employed, like I've always had some form of self-employment, some kind of side gig going on since I've been, what, 20? Uh, 
but being fully self-employed, not answering to anyone for the past five, maybe even six years now, I've been, uh, I've been off the plantation. I got out of Auschwitz. And I'm looking back, I'm like, holy shit, you guys don't realize just how I, this is a perfect example. I wrote an article about Silicon Valley. And to show you what kind of echo chamber and brain, not brainwashing, but you don't realize how much of a slave you are because you're in the system, not the selling, dude, man, you're in the system. No, I'm talking as like a genuine economist standing outside who got free. And I'm looking back and like, how do you accept or tolerate this? The Silicon Valley, your commutes are horrible. Your taxes and fees and all that, not only do you pay the highest amount of taxes in the United States, around 60% in California, but when you look at the fees, uh, all this green stuff, it, it drives the prices for everything up. Food, this guy has an electric bill of $500 a month, $500 a month for electricity. Tolls, fees, gas tax, I, I, my God, so when you, Calculate it all out, not to mention all these hours. These kids are working 80 to 100 hours a week because they're in Silicon Valley and they made six figures. In, in the real world, when you adjust for everything, you're experiencing a standard of living that the average American who makes $30,000 a year does. Probably worse because of all the mental problems you got to deal with uh, commuting, uh, traffic, prices, just a, 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 an overly populated shithole. We have very nice fresh. Ah, shut up. I mean, it, you, you guys don't realize that you're on a slave plantation. You guys make your, oh, I got $80,000. Oh, they paid me. Oh, I got benefits. I need my health care. I need my health care. Oh, oh, they contributed to my 401k. They made a 3% match. Oh, fuck that. That's like being thankful the Nazis gave you gruel. Oh, the Nazis gave me gruel. The Nazis gave me gruel. Okay, I'll go ahead and beat up some more uh, rocks for, for the Fuhrer. You guys don't realize what kind of toll that takes on you over the course of your life. And then you're 60 and it's too late. You didn't spend time with your kids. You didn't spend time with your spouse. You didn't spend time with your friends. You didn't spend time on yourself or your hobby. I get paid for this fucking shit. I got to buy this ascot and this getup for fun. Well, I got it as a prop because it's Bachelor Pet Theater. You can watch it. But this, this, you, if you have kids... It's too late. If you have the mortgage and the McMansion, the car you can't afford, again, getting back to minimalism, if you fucked yourself in the ass that way, if you went down to the big ass ass dildo store and you bought it and then you started fucking yourself up the ass with it back when you were 30, you got married, little wifey poo wanted the McMansion poo and wanted the four kidsy poo while she went off and got her master's poo and her master's of fine artsy poo. While the kids want to do soccer, chess, gymnastics, baseball, swimming, uh, football, basketball. Oh, actually, none of this is going to help you because you're screwed. You're, you're literally, you, you are indebted in a McMansion, a car you can't afford, a wife you probably have some spending habits, or hubby's got some spending habits. You don't care to raise your own kid. Kids don't even know who you are. Your kid's life is at school and then extracurricular activities. They just happen to sleep at your house. All right. And so it's too late for you to, you just can't just, well, I'm going to start a business. Uh, good luck with that. All right. But for the rest of you, before you fuck up your life, like I'd say, damn only near 40% of working adults in the United States, all right, realize that I would almost say, you know, because money, money is, once you got fuck you money, there's not much more you need money for. Once you got food, clothing, and shelter paid for, you got good family and friends. It's the mental health that comes with the flexibility and adaptability, especially with today's online era technology, of self-employment, all right? So that's the third reason you go into business. Now, the what instigated this is, is these lies, and I, I wanna emphasize them again. So you, if you're going into business, this is what's prompting you to go into business, you know to stop it right the fuck now, reconsider what I just told you, Maybe read my book, Bachelor Pad Economics. Read the chapter on entrepreneurship. That would be very helpful to you, all right? Because you're going to go into business for all. So we already talked about, I want to make a shit ton of money. You don't go into business for making a shit ton of money. You go in for the three reasons I just talked about there before. But the main one, the main lie, because it, 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 it lies to the human's desires of laziness and sloth. It, it tells us what we want to hear. It's the Oprah. It's little, you got like, like fat devil Oprah on one shoulder and then on the other shoulder it's also the fat devil Oprah because the bitch never fucking told any of you girls the truth both devils both lying to you it's, everything is fun the secret 
All this fucking cockamamie bullshit that you humans are so predisposed to fucking believe in. Little shoulder devils, both of them, in stereo, Oprah, fat, lying, little tridents and pitchforks. You do not go into business because it's fun. You never go into business. The business is going to be less painful. Running your own business is less painful than working for someone else. That is the truth about entrepreneurship. Every, unless you are like, I'm trying to think of what would be fun. Take the funnest business you could ever think of, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It's not fun. Ben and Jerry have fun, they're happier, it's, it's, it's less boring, it's less tedious, it's less painful than working a real job, but fun as Ben and Jerry's could be, what do you gotta do? You still gotta do accounting, you gotta worry about the F, not FDA. Food and Drug, FD, yeah, Food and Drug Administration. You gotta worry about health. You gotta get your suppliers. You gotta get scientists. You get everything that goes into making ice cream. And ice cream could be the funnest thing ever. Take uh, Disney World, all right? You think running Disney World is fun? Well, for the clients, it's fun, but they're selling fun. The production and the manufacture of fun is a royal pain in the ass. You gotta hire kids, they gotta stand in the hot, sweaty thing in the Florida heat with their costume on, they can't breathe. Everyone has to stay in care of a guy, you know, poor guy in goofy, he's like, oh God, kill me now. That's what he's thinking inside and taking pictures with the little rugrats that you brought in. And the managers aren't having any better time. Oh, this broke down, that broke down, get the engineers in. Oh, we gotta do the accounting, we gotta balance the debits and credits. And and usually I'm, I'm, I'm picking the most fun, you know, ice cream, uh, theme parks to show you guys what is much more common and that is when you you, you guys uh, choose companies that are hobbies for the women it's horse farms or bottle shops or what's that a clothing store yeah because no fucking broad has come up with a horse farm or a clothing store ever in their lives I mean, we're just, we're, the, we here in the United States just don't have enough clothing stores. Stop being fucking stupid, all right? That's your stupid dream. Like, that's you forcing what you would like on society. Society will determine what you will provide to them. You are society's bitch. Get that through your head. That's how you make money. All these guys. I'm going to, I'm an interior designer. I knew these gals. Yeah, they were hilarious. They were like, we're interior designers? I'm like, oh, Okay. What do you do? We could sell people on how to stage their houses. It's very, very big. I'm like, so do you stage it? No, we just can sell people. They're not fucking out of business because it's fucking not fucking need. That's them forcing what they would like to do on site. All right? Not asking, what does society want? Oh, they want shit that happens on this app to do really cool shit. Well, that's hard. That's math. I can't do that. Right? Men, before you think I'm being too hard on women and their horse farms and their bottle shops, and they're going to be a fashion consultant. You fucking idiots all thinking you're fucking Sam Malone, you're going to start a bar. Oh, let's start a sports bar. Sports bar. Fucking H. Christ. How many fucking times did I see some dipshit, cocksucking, motherfucking piece of goddamn middle-aged baby boomer shit come through my office and go to bar? Oh, you got a bar. Uh, we need more money. Oh, why do you need money? Oh, it's making a lot of money, but I'm out of money. How does that fucking work, Phil? So anyway, they want all just because you thought it'd be fun to run a bar. You do not go into business for fun. And the reason you don't go into business for fun is because it's fun. That means that's a hobby. And that means people are going to do it for free, which means people are going to be doing a lot of it. It's going to be flooded. The market will be flooded with people doing it. And that means prices go down, which means you're not making any fucking money. You ever wonder why restaurants go in and out of business so quickly? Because some dipshit kid who went to culinary school over at La Cordon Bleu thought, oh, I'm going to run a business. You're going to be fun. I'm going to run a business. And you see this. You see this in your local newspapers or the local, not newspapers, but the, the what's going on business-wise. Oh, James Johnson decided to start up a French rotisserie. It's lucky he has experience. There was even an article I did. Um... Minneapolis, these two guys, they're going to start an organ... Oh, no, no, hang on, let me find it. Let's be intellectually honest. These guys were going to pay Minneapolis the living wage. Uh, restaurant. Restaurant tours. What's it like to eat at Bite? Oh, here's City Pages. Yeah, it was Bite, B-Y-T-E. Because you see, now I... It's so fun! It's so fun! They started this 
restaurant called Byte, B-Y-T-E, because it's supposed to be a geek bar. See? Because it's an internet bite? Like, like, a, like a size of information? But you also could get a bite? All oh, those fucking geniuses. Anyway, I hope they make it, because uh, I do hope people do make it. I, I wish that people make money, and entrepreneurship is a great thing. But how much you want to bet in five years, they aren't going to be a bite. Maybe, maybe they open up multiple, maybe they get hit on something. Maybe it's great. Maybe, and then they were talking about, I remember this now, they're talking about how they're cutting away management and all this other shit, and they're going to streamline it. So maybe these kids are smarter than average, and hopefully they will. But honestly, the, statistically speaking, what the, the real world phenomenon you see with people starting bars and clubs and nightclubs and restaurants, do they stay in business like Procter & Gamble? or Walmart, no, they go in and out of business every three to five years. Because you started something you thought was fun along with everybody else and now the market is flooded and you can't charge enough for your pro for your uh, costs or your prices to cover your costs. This is why, another interesting thing if you care to be bored with local microeconomics, all these old supper clubs that have been around since the 40s and the 50s, do you know why you can go there and get a scotch this thick, the poor, you know, what, four fingers deep, and you only pay maybe $10 for a high-end scotch, or you could get steak for under 20 bucks. You know why that is at these old places? Because they paid off their fucking mortgage 30 years ago. They don't have huge overhead or expenses to cover. They got material costs, and they got insurance and property taxes. But you go to the more slicky McSlickersons, hey, you know, uh, whatever. Some, you know, The Zone, or Myth, or Tropics, or one of these things where it's all cool and new and fancy, and it's like, uh, you know, it's at the top of this building or something like that. And all of a sudden, the drinks are $17. You know why that is? Because their lease is that They don't even own the fucking place. That's why. And then guess what happens? You know, Sticks, Styx, because that's so cool. They go out of business, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's uh, Leaders. It's the new bar. And it, it, it's... So... Don't be that idiot. Don't waste your three to five years pursuing a fucking hobby because it's fun losing money and borrowing from your friends and borrowing from the bank and then having to file for bankruptcy later. You go into business for three reasons and three reasons only. Fuck you money. Having no boss so you can achieve excellence. Oh, then what was the third one? Oh, and then the mental health and the flexibility that comes with it. Those are the three reasons you go into business. Right? You go in for any other reason, you could get lucky, you could succeed. But chances are you're going to be that cocksucking motherfucking piece of shit coming to my shitty ass bank asking for a loan to bail you out because you got turned down by everybody else. And then you will really fuck up and, and, and ruin your life. Because I've seen it, man. I have seen it fucking happen. Where these people come in, then, then the divorce happens, you lose your kids, you lose your house, that's for sure. It goes to the bank. We repossessed on many people at the banks because they... We, we lent money and it wasn't my fault. Read my book, Behind the Housing Crash. You'll see horror stories. You will ruin your fucking life if you go into business for all the wrong reasons. And making shit ton of coin and fun are definitely the two most worst reasons <laughs> that are going to guarantee you will not only fail in business, but fuck up your life. You guys got questions, you can go to assholeconsulting.com. I'm America's older brother, and you probably should pay a couple bucks to listen to me. You can also go to my blog, CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com, and read my wisdom there. You can read my books. I got Bachelor Pad Economics, Curse of the High IQ, Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major, and Reconnaissance Man. Oh, and enjoy the decline. And then we have the Clary Podcast, of which I have to do one later, because uh, I've been taking a two-week hiatus. Uh, but you can find me online. And, and so before you go into business... We you start your horse farm, I'm going to start a yard farm. I like, I like yarn. I like making things. Maybe contact me at ASL Consulting and drop a couple hundred bucks to make sure you don't fucking piss away 200000 We'll catch you kids later. Toodles.